Hey everyone, welcome back. Get ready because we are diving right into the world of the Olympics today. And, you know, things are always interesting when it comes to the business of the Olympics, but this is a new one. This time we're looking to Switzerland and their bid to host the 2038 Winter Games. But it's not just about Switzerland. We've got a fascinating article from gamesbids.com about how these games are chosen. And let me tell you, this whole thing is giving off some serious political thriller vibes. So imagine this. A country gets what looks like a VIP pass to host the Olympics. That's kind of the situation Switzerland's found themselves in right now. And it really makes you think, like, how do they get this supposed fast track? What does it even mean for the future of choosing Olympic hosts? Is this the new normal? Is this going to spark some huge global competition? We've got so many questions. Luckily, I've got our expert here with me today to help us unpack it all. Welcome. So this whole thing, this privileged dialogue that the GamesBids.com article talks about that really caught my eye. Was there some secret meeting? Did Switzerland find some secret loophole? I need to know. What's the deal here? Well, it's not quite a secret handshake, but the way the International Olympic Committee is approaching potential host cities has mm -hmm. definitely shifted. I mean, it used to be this whole big production, right? Cities mm -hmm. going all out, trying to impress the IOC, promising the world to try and get those games. But over time, all that showmanship, well, it's caused some problems, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. You end up with these crazy high costs, accusations of corruption. And I think what really changed things, people started pushing back. Citizens saying, wait a minute, we don't want this. It, yeah. The public votes, those referendums, those have really thrown a wrench in the system. Cities put their all into these bids and then poof, that's it's over. Ah. Exactly. And for the IOC, that's a disaster. Publicly getting rejected like that is the last thing they want. So now they're walking this tightrope, right? Trying to keep the Olympics prestigious, but also dealing with, well, reality. Right, because it's not just about the show anymore, is it? Sustainability is a huge concern now. The financial burden on host cities is under a microscope. And people are a lot more aware now of the potential downsides of hosting the games. OK, so with all that in mind, let's talk about Switzerland. Their initial bid, they were going for practical, cost-effective, yeah. really playing up the sustainability angle, using existing facilities, spreading things out. You know, it felt like they had learned from those past rejections, like they were trying to do things differently this time. Yeah, and you'd think the IOC would love that, right? They've been pushing this whole Olympic Agenda 2025 thing, which is all about making the games more sustainable, more financially responsible. But, and here's where it gets interesting, the IOC actually asked Switzerland to rethink their plan. Wait, really? They told them to go back to a more traditional centralized model. Huh. So much for doing things differently, huh? <laughs> I mean, that sounds like they're going backward. If they want the games to be sustainable, manageable. Why go back to the old way of doing things? It doesn't make sense. That's the million dollar question. The IOC's logic, at least what they're saying, is that it's about the Olympic spirit. They think having athletes spread out across a country, even if it's better for the environment, better for costs, it takes away from that unity, that feeling of being together that the games are supposed to be about. It's like right. they're stuck. Talk about mixed messages, right? One minute, it's all about sustainability. The next minute. It's all about holding on to tradition no matter what. I can't imagine what the Swiss people must be thinking about all this. Yeah. This could be a very different Olympics than what they signed up for. And that's where Switzerland's unique political system comes in, right? They've got this history of using referendums, those public votes, to make big decisions, like really big decisions. Direct democracy in action, huh? <sighs> It's fascinating. And we all know how that's turned out in the past when it comes to Olympic bids, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Remember Scion 2026? All that work, all mm. that planning. And then the Swiss people voted no in their referendum, and that was it. Game over. It's kind of hard not to wonder if the IOC is, like, trying to avoid that whole situation this time around, mm -hmm. you know? With this privileged dialogue thing, it feels like maybe they're trying to pick a host city that's less likely to say no to begin with. Instead of open competition, it's more like controlled. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. And that's a really important point to consider. I mean, sure, you could argue that this new approach makes things more stable, right? No more getting shot down at the last minute. No more wasting resources on fancy bids that never actually happened. But then on the other hand, it makes you think, are we losing something important in the process? Like, are we sacrificing transparency? Are we sacrificing fairness just to make things easier? It's a tough question, no doubt about it. And it makes me think about the other countries out there who might want to host the games, but don't get invited to this privileged dialogue. Mm. What happens to them? Do they just have to give up on their Olympic dreams? 
It's a valid concern for sure. It really does make you wonder about the future of the Olympics overall. Are we moving toward a system where just a few countries get to host, taking turns? Or will the IOC eventually go back to a more open process where anyone can bid? So many questions. And speaking of other potential hosts, is anyone else waiting in the wings, hoping Switzerland might drop the ball, ready to jump in and grab that 2038 spot? Oh, there are always countries who want to host the Olympics. Sweden and Japan both expressed interest in the 2030 Winter Games, actually. Sapporo in Japan was really pushing for it. The IOC ended up passing them over. But I doubt they've given up on hosting altogether. If Switzerland can't pull it off, if the referendums go sideways or they can't get the money together, the IOC might circle back to those countries. You never know. So it's not a done deal for Switzerland, not by a long shot. They've got a lot to figure out. We've talked about the public votes, but let's be real. Hosting the Olympics. That's expensive, yeah. like really expensive. Tell me about it. The article mentioned that Switzerland has until the end of 2027 to get their finances in order. That means finding the money, finalizing all their plans, and of course, getting the public on board with those referendums. Okay, so end of 2027, that's the big deadline. Then what? Let's say everything goes perfectly for Switzerland. They get the money, the people are happy, they've got their plans all set. When would the IOC actually make a decision? Well, if Switzerland manages to do all that and the IOC gives them the green light, we could see a vote as early as 2028. That means we could know who's hosting the 2038 Winter Olympics in just a few years. Oh, no, that's sooner than I thought. It seems like finding the money is going to be the biggest hurdle. Mm -hmm. Any idea who might be willing to invest? Have they mentioned any potential sponsors? You know, the article didn't name any names, but they did say that the Swiss government sees this as a big economic opportunity. They're talking about forming committees, exploring different ways to finance everything. It sounds like they're really trying to get funding from both the public and private sectors. That's definitely a good sign for Switzerland. But it brings us back to this whole transparency issue. If the IOC is moving away from these open bids, are we losing something important? It feels like a trade-off. Yeah. Transparency for efficiency. Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? It's a trade-off for sure. I mean, you could say a more streamlined process could lead to more sustainable games, games that are actually affordable. Maybe it could stop cities from going billions into debt, trying to outdo each other with these extravagant bids. But it makes you think, you know, if things are happening behind closed doors, does that hurt the spirit of the Olympics? Yes. The whole world is supposed to be involved, right? Yeah. But if no one knows how the host city is chosen... Yeah, that's the heart of the issue, isn't it? It's about finding that balance. The ISC is trying to protect the games from all these problems, the debt, the logistics, all that. But if they're not careful, they could end up making things worse. You know, less transparent, less accountable. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out as we move toward future games. Definitely a turning point for the Olympics, wouldn't you say? This whole thing with Switzerland... It's a sign of things to come. It really shows how the Olympics are changing, and not everyone might like those changes. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today, haven't we? Switzerland, the IOC, the future of the Olympics, it's a lot. We talked about the role of the public, the push and pull between tradition and doing things differently. But before we wrap up, we want to leave you with something to think about. What if this is it? What if this is the future? What if this more exclusive way of choosing Olympic hosts becomes the new normal? Will it actually make the games better, more sustainable, more successful, or will it just make people trust the Olympics less? Will it hurt that global spirit that's supposed to be at the heart of the games? It's something to consider, don't you think? A lot to unpack there. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of the Olympics. We'll be back next time with another fascinating story. Until then, stay curious.